Okay, if you live or have ever spent time in St. Paul's North End, chances are you've met or you've seen Mike Hartzell. He's known as Bones. He was a legend in that community and a bright light. He was also a Vietnam veteran, and he took pride in his community, taking care of the people who lived there. You could often see him sweeping and shoveling the sidewalks along Rice Street in exchange for a meal. Bones passed away over the weekend at the age of 71, so we thought we'd honor him by taking you back to 1998 when the late CARE 11 reporter Brad Woodard filed this report. Just one at a time, and I had to take my time, move, move little by little, and then until I get to where I'm going. To witness the spectacle of a man called Bones inching his caravan down the sidewalk. Whatever you, whatever you can do for yourself, you gotta do it. Is to witness the daily ritual of a man some consider a living legend, living on the streets of St. Paul. It's home away from home. And, you know, you just simply gotta keep yourself busy. Okay, this is table four, Ange. Table four. You know who he is, Bones? Right. The one with the two dogs. Oh, I got quite a few friends out here. I'm in this wheelbarrow and <laughs> wagon. It's a train, I call it. <laughs> it takes them half hour to move it a half a block. To a casual observer, Bones might seem just another faceless, homeless man. But spend any amount of time trying to learn more about him, and you'll soon discover there's no such thing. They call Bones the Lord of the Boulevard. His world consists of several blocks here along Rice Street, and he seldom strays. Although technically he's homeless, in one sense you can say Bones never really left home. You see, this is where he grew up. And while it might not occur to you as you pass him on the street, he's someone's son, he's someone's brother, and he's someone's friend. Come on. Yeah. Come here. To be truthful, what initially drew us to this story wasn't Bones, but his dogs. You're going home. Confiscated by authorities last winter after animal welfare advocates expressed concern, the dogs were spayed and neutered. Hey, Mike. Hey, buddy. Hey, hey, hey. Suze. Suze. Then returned to Bones in mid-March. It's a little more relaxing. And they're having them back. That's what it occurred to us that lost somewhere in the debate over the welfare of the dogs was the fact that a man had been living alongside them. How long have you been out here on Rice Street? Here? Yeah. I've been here all my life. His real name is Mike Hartzell. Born 51 years ago, he spent the last 17 on the street, just blocks from the high school where he earned the nickname Bones because he was so skinny, just blocks from his childhood home. Well, he graduated from high school and went to work, got along fine with everybody, went in the service, was over in Korea, and uh, came home, and then he, that's when things seemed to go bad, when he started on the pills and the smoking pot. And then I decided, we decided, my husband and I both decided that that was time for him to go out and be on his own. There is a winter weather advisory today for the rest of the day, periods of light snow. When it rains, there's nothing to do except sit. You get that wind chill weather, there's a lot of bad, bad, bad weather that you gotta put up with. What's it like for you knowing that just a few blocks away, your son is sitting out in the snow? It's horrible. It's horrible. Especially when it gets cold. I know. Over the years, she has certainly beat herself up many, many times trying to figure out, you know, what she did wrong. Like her older brother, Claudine Fiedler, I didn't stray so far from home. So like her mother, she understands the frustration of watching a loved one slip away and not being able to do a thing about it. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I don't know that I can put it into words. It's confusing for me to believe that that's my brother. Hmm. Family members say it's not that they haven't tried to help Mike, it's that he doesn't want their help. And while they suspect he's schizophrenic, they haven't been able to coax him into a facility where he could be fully diagnosed. Everybody knows Mike. Yeah, yeah, they should. Yeah, 51 years in this area, they should. This is his choice. 
and he feels he's fulfilling an obligation out here in his neighborhood by keeping it clean. As far as the people who live and work on Rice Street are concerned, Mike's tattered caravan is as much a fixture as any business. Okay, if you'll just sign your life away, I think Mike came with Rice Street. And they stopped making judgments a long time ago. What constitutes a home? I mean, does it have to have four walls? Does it have to have an interior, exterior coating? Um, Mike lives on the street. That is his home, and his roof is the sky, and his view is whatever happens to go along him. Do you think he's happy? Oh, he seems happy. But see, I don't know if he's really happy or not. I just always have the feeling that it's just a big bluff. And then maybe I don't know what I'm talking about either. I don't know. I played Ange. This is his decision. I mean, if anything would happen to him tomorrow, this was his choice. This was Michael's choice. Well, you know, they say home is where the heart is. Yeah. Where's your heart? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Guy lived on his own terms, and the really beautiful eulogies I saw today in the, both the Pioneer Press and the Star Tribune, 20 years after that report, he was doing what he wanted to do. He wanted to live on Rice Street. Yeah. He took pride in that. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no. I, I, it's fascinating to hear from his mom and his sister and sort of the, the inner family struggles that they had and the moment that she caught him, you know, smoking marijuana and kicked him out on the street and that, that last soundbite about maybe it's all just a big bluff. There's so much more to this story. It's just uh, it was fascinating and an inside look at it too. So it was a great report from Brad. We definitely wanted to honor Mike and it was good to see our friend Brad Woodard again. May you rest in peace, sir.